Hello and welcome to the Holy Hour Podcast, the bi-weekly all-cure podcast. I'm Gavin and thanks so much for joining us. Hope you're doing good out there, getting ready to wind down this year and uh, all your holiday madness is taking shape. We got a bonus episode for you guys here. If you notice, we're breaking away from the uh, bi-weekly thing and uh, we just put out an episode last week, but I didn't want this one to pass by too long. So uh, I was really glad that it happened and I uh, was ma- able to make it happen. But some of you guys out there might have realized um, we have a new cure book in our world that came out in uh, mid-October. It's called The Cure FAQ, and um, it's written by Christian Gerard. And I was able to track him down and get a conversation with Christian uh, about the process of writing this awesome book and uh, just cure fandom in general. Uh, he's a legit diehard care fan, so it's always so nice when somebody that's writing these books turns out to be um, a legit care fan, and he definitely is that, as you'll see very quickly as we're talking. Um, and, you know, it's not just the paid gig where they, they're just forking over the idea to somebody and they're doing their cookie-cutter music bio on it. Not the case here at all. So I'm real excited to to share this conversation with you guys. I'm kind of rushing to get this out. So, um, yeah, I hope uh, it, it might be the last one of the year here. I'm going to also try to squeeze in our end-of-the-year one before I leave for my travels, but that one might have to wait till after New Year's. Um, so you'll either see it or you won't, you know, we'll keep it like the cure spontaneous, but, uh, this is a wonderful episode. I can't wait to dive in before we officially jump in though. I do want to thank our Patreon as always, um, such a, a, a cool batch of people over there that, uh, I would love to talk to in person and hopefully will soon. Um, but Donna Craig, Jeff Hilton, Jeff Cortland Jones, Suzanne, John, Ben, Allison, Alan, Dione, and of course Scott Kruger at the Sarlacc Digest, who uh, they have just moved their uh, Star Wars theme podcast slash live YouTube show to Wednesday nights. And it's going to be on Wednesday nights now at 8 p.m. Pacific time. And uh, that's in preparation for the Bo- Book of Boba Fett that's coming out on Disney+. Plus. Uh, they're taking a break now till uh, you know... Christmas has passed and uh, Boba Fett comes out, which is on the 29th. And I believe that'll be the next episode back. Uh, so fresh off the, the burner there, they're going to analyze it and hash it all out. So I can't think of a better way to top off the viewing of a cool new Star Wars show than listening to these guys talk. And uh, that'll be at 8 p.m. on YouTube pacific time and uh if you miss it you can catch the replay and uh all their other episodes and anywhere you listen to streaming podcast too so sarlacc digest don't miss that one and uh, of course kate at curethreads.com is always a reliable source for wonderful cure inspired and original artwork by kate um you can go on over there and get anything from from cool love cats boots to uh team cure jerseys so go browse at curethreads.com. It's fun just to even look around at all the cool possibilities. If you are up in Calgary, Canada and need a drink, um, Dickens Pub slash Venue is the place you're going to want to go. Lisa can't recommend it enough. It sounds amazing, so I want to recommend it to you guys too. So go on up. Um, if you're looking for something to do New Year's Eve, they have a Hang the DJ Night, 80s music versus 90s. And uh, it sounds like a, a great time if you're looking for New Year's plans. Go to DickensYYC.com to get more info on that event and others that are coming up. Um, and they still do their live streams too. So keep dancing in, in your home. Tuesdays and Wednesday nights, Mountain Time, 8, eight Mountain Standard Time. And Saturdays at 9 Mountain Standard Time. And that's on Dickens YYC on Twitch, of course. And of course, this holiday season, give some blood, help out. There's a lot of people that are in need. So uh, Matt would like you to, to check out the Red Cross blood donor app. It's a super easy way to schedule an appointment and give some blood and track where it goes from there to make sure it's getting into the right hands and, um, and bodies. <laughs> and uh, if you don't feel like using the app, you know, just contact your hospital or blood bank locally. Um, I'm sure they'll be able to help you out. So uh, you see the pop-ups all over too so it's the right it's the right thing to do and the right way to do it all right is the great late wilford brimley would have said 
So, on top of that, our boy Chaz is 17 Second Shirts. Bigcartel.com. It's always cranking out cool new designs. You don't want to miss them out. Um, so go that. Follow his uh, go that and follow his uh, Instagram at 17 underscore seconds. So you'll see them when they pop up and know what's up for pre-order. He's just wrapping up a really rad hyena Susie and the Banshee shirts too. So he's thinking outside the box here. You're getting all those cool shirts you wish you had as a wee little Cure fan, but never existed. So you're only going to get these designs through Chaz at 17 second shirts, so don't miss out. All right, let's get on with the show. I think uh, everyone's really going to enjoy this. I had a blast talking to Christian Gerard, author of The Cure FAQ, all that's left to know about the most heartbreakingly excellent rock band the world has ever known. Hey, man, it's going really well. Thanks so much for having me. I really appreciate um, the chance to talk to you. Yeah, we, we really appreciate it. This book had been kind of uh, looming out there. I, I'd seen it pop up on some kind of Amazon list of like a pre-order way back when, and I was like kind of scoping it mm-hmm. out, and I was scoping it out, and then finally I was like, oh, it's, it's out now, and I'm very excited, yeah. and uh, snatched it up as soon as possible, and, uh, you know, I'm just going to not even build up any suspense that I'm a big fan of it. I really, really enjoying this book. It's uh, really awesome just to be, you know, finished it about a week ago, but I've been flipping back through it already and uh, <laughs> rereading sections. Well, so yeah, it's I really appreciate cool. that. I'm glad you liked it. So yeah, the book is called The Cure, FAQ, all that's left to know about the most heartbreakingly excellent rock band the world has ever known. So the world has ever known, yep. yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, so that's pretty rad. And, uh, you know, thanks for making the time, of course, during this hectic yeah. season to get to talk to us. But, um, so, My pleasure. so yeah, that title there, though, it's always kind of nice to, um, you know, know where, where did that come from? I think that tips us off to a lot with this book by the title there. So. Yeah, that's <laughs> actually, um, well, the, the, the FAQ part is, is part of the series by the publisher, sort of, um, um, but the, the subtitle came from actually it was Trent Reznor's, um, Hall of Fame speech. It's sort of a paraphrase right. of one of the, one of the descriptions that he gave yeah. in, his, in his Hall of Fame speech. And to me, it just sort of summed up, you know, I had a hard time coming up with that, you know, trying to figure out what to do with that subtitle. And, yeah. um, because it was like, you know, it's like all that's left to know about the cure in their 40 year magical, you know, I don't, it, I, just, right. I couldn't, come, it was just it, dead end all the way. Yeah. Yeah. Um, the, the ultimate until, cure book or something. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> so when I heard that speech, I was like, Oh my gosh, you know, ding, yeah. ding, ding, I got to figure out how to fit that in there somehow. And it, and it ended up working. Yeah. It's perfect. Yeah. I did. I felt like an idiot for not catching it at first too. I was like, wow, that's a very <laughs> like wordy, cool, long. I loved it. But at the same time, I was all like, what? That's gotta be a, and I'm like, oh yes, yes. I was there even. So yeah, <laughs> <laughs> that makes total yeah. sense. Did you make it to the rock and roll hall of fame? Were you there? No, I almost did. Yeah. I almost did. Um, I, I ended up not being able to go, but I did watch it, of course. Yeah, yeah. And um, it was it blew me away. I yeah. thought, you know, it really made me smile just to see the 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 the, the, the faces of those guys, you know, and how pr- proud how much pride they had, yeah. obviously in their work and the performance. I thought was phenomenal. Yeah. And to open up with Shake Dog Shake like they did, I mean, that's the cure right there. Totally. They do what they want, you know. <laughs> right. They, they do what they want. They're not going to do just five pre pop songs. And I loved it. I thought they were phenomenal. That's awesome. Yeah, it was such a, a sweet surprise thing. It was definitely not the kind of thing I would normally. I'm kind of more comfort zone cure fan where I'm not one of the, the traveling fans that, you know, who yeah. go everywhere. <laughs> but I mean, like, in this moment, I was like, this is so cool. And Chaz, the guy that's on the show normally with me. And, uh, mm-hmm. you know, we we're just debating it back and forth because it was like a good chance they weren't even going to be there. You know, we we're like, what yeah, is it's this like you never be? know what's, what they're going to yeah, do. Yeah, they're going to play like three songs or something. In. And finally, we we're just like, the hell with it. Let's buy the tickets and go. It'll be a fun chance to just hang out anyway. And, yeah. and, and I was so glad we did for like the reasons you're saying. It was just, I knew that it was going to be. Yeah. You know, they're going to make it a cure thing like that by putting those spins. I never would have guessed they would have played Shake Dog Shake. That's cool. You know, and it was just. I really like, felt like it was a win for the for the cure fans, the, for the outsiders, quote unquote, you know, mm-hmm. all these years listening to them. 
and suddenly there they are on the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, you know? <laughs> yeah, exactly. I never would have imagined, you know? Yeah, that's pretty rad. And, uh, and you know, and I like the way you kind of use that as an anchor a lot in the book, where, you know, where it kind of kicks off with a section talking about that, and you come back to it at the end, and it's even just dropped throughout, you know, as like these... Yeah, it's, I think it's a big deal. It puts them on par with, you know, the Beatles and Hendrix. And, yeah. You know, and a lot of people will never see them that way, but they're there, and they deserve to be there, you know. They've yeah. been so influential. Yeah, for sure. And I think, yeah, just because of their weariness of just being like the party are they going to come to it or not kind of thing you know or just yeah. like but at the same time yeah for all of us it is a huge deal and you know and and that was kind of the selling point of when i decided we should go to it because it was like this reason exactly where i was like every time that anyone's going to be recapping cure history from now on that's always going to be dropped in there you know whether it it was a debacle or they didn't even show up. They'd still be mentioning that, you know, and it's like, it's, it's definitely a huge milestone for sure. So, you know, absolutely. Gotta, yeah, absolutely. Gotta make Sometimes, you know, those, those are war things, you know, you take them with a grain of salt and mm-hmm. you know, I know Robert's kind of whatever about a lot of them, but you know, this one, I, you know, it's, it's a little bit different. I think there's a lot of um, prestige that goes along with it, you know, and, you know, I think it's well-deserved and it's, I think, I think the fans really were excited about it too. So I think, I think it's a good thing. Yeah, for sure. And yeah, it's a perfect title for the book there. And, uh, Trenton Reznor, of course, did a great job with that, that speech. Uh, that blew me away too. So <laughs> good choice yeah, on did. the title right from the start. I, I gotta say that was cool. Um, but yeah, I mean, diving into the book there came out uh, October 15th, right? So 10-15? Right. so two months exactly. <laughs> yeah, so uh, pretty rad. Only been out two months. So um, yeah, I'm hoping to get the buzz around. I haven't seen it flying around on a lot of social media stuff, so I don't really want to Yeah, it's, it's been a little it under the radar. It's, uh, cool. I'm, I'm, I'm trying, you know, I've been, I've been sort of in flux and... Uh, sort of my life is kind of crazy at the moment yeah but um i'm going to be focusing on trying to do a little bit more social media outreach and cool. just get the word out there yeah and i've been working on getting it in stores um you know you just have to call <laughs> yeah. it just requires a lot of legwork you know yeah, yeah. And, uh, the publishers you know trying to do their part and i'm hoping to have a couple of signings uh at some point but i'm not trying to make it a, a, a sprint Right. You know, this whole coming year, it's going to be a great opportunity. Hmm. The new album and tour coming yeah. you know, at the end of the year and all that. It's just, it's it's going to take a little bit of time. Hopefully, it'll start to build. Yeah, yeah, I think it will. And uh, definitely been waiting to to blow up the praises on this end here. I'll try to get it out there as much as possible here. But oh, I was like, hoping to get I get the it. talk to you. So yeah, <laughs> um, so yeah, it, it's uh, ten fifteen. It came out on too. So that was a cool move right from the start. Did, were your publishers yeah. real pissed that you demanded it must come out on ten fifteen? No, <laughs> that was purely. I want to say it was purely accidental, but yeah. um, it was purely accidental. Yeah. <laughs> it, it was it was pushed back. You know, um, COVID sort of delayed it for almost a year yeah the publisher closed down and then i i was late getting you know i my personal situation has been so in flux i was late getting the copy editing done i you know i i, I basically missed every deadline along the way mm-hmm. and um but you know the publisher stood with me they were fantastic you know my agent stood with me and so it was late but you know it, yeah. it finally made it and i <laughs> i held on to it and <laughs> i'm so glad that uh that it's finally out. That's awesome. But, um, yeah, but 1015, when I saw that, because you know, that was, I, I didn't know if, if someone at Backbeat Books was like, okay, we're going to do this 1015. Uh, I, I think it was a total coincidence, honestly, but you know, yeah, it was so perfect. Goes. Yeah, cure nerds love that shit, so it's good. Yeah. You can get anything. That, <laughs> it's a reference. Well, it may have been intentional. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Was, that was, that was, it was originally, the last date was July 20th, I think. And then I was still not quite wrapped up with the copy editing, and so it got pushed back. And so that last, that I didn't know what, what it was going to be. Yeah. Um, that's so cool. when I saw a ten fifteen, I was like, could not be more perfect. <laughs> yeah, that's a sign. That's good, good. <laughs> so yeah, these FAQ books, I, I wasn't familiar with them, um, but yeah, they seem seem like a cool series. There. Um, how did how did you land that? As far as being like many steps along the way, seeing that you're a legit cure fan or you at least tricked me yeah. you know or it wasn't like I mean, you just took the gig it seemed like how did how did that come to be it was um it was serendipity really it was just being out there yeah. um this is my first book and so i had been doing music articles for years you know going back to like 2006 okay. in different publications you know and i've written about the cure 
probably three or four times. You know, I did like a ranking of their albums, 13 to 1. Mm -hmm. um, I did a couple concert reviews. I did a piece on Wild Mood Swings. So sort of miscellaneous things, you know. And so Back B Books, um, they wanted to do an FAQ volume on The Cure. Mm -hmm. And so the, they tasked the, the gentleman who ended up being my agent to find a writer to submit a proposal. And so he just emailed me out of the blue, uh, this agent. He saw my articles. Um, he said, would you be interested in submitting a proposal? And I'm like, this is a scam, obviously. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, but it wasn't, it was real. And um, so I submitted a proposal and they, the, the publisher took it with very minimal changes. Nice. Um, and that was that. I had a contract, I had a book deal, boom. Awesome. Um, so it was pretty exciting. Yeah. Um, and it just came from d doing articles, you know, getting your stuff out there. And, um, you know, they, they like the writing. Yeah, so. that's cool. So, yeah, and it was like, so Cure writing that they saw then? Or was it about yeah, other yeah, 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 done, in particular? I'd done some articles on the Cure. He'd, uh, my agent had been looking for that specifically, you know, sort of scouring the web, looking for articles about the Cure to see if he could find a writer to do this book. And um, and also some of my other articles too. Yeah. Um, so that's how it happened. That's cool. Yeah, because you know you. Always, and, I love like reading music bios and memoirs and stuff. All that you know just seems to be one of those constants that you know are always popping up, and there are always so many varying levels of how much I like them. You know, some books mm -hmm. will be overly like technical but too dry and then some yeah. get overly like personal you know where they're just dumping their own theories oh, yeah. and stuff in it way too much and so, yeah you gotta so try it's to avoid tough. That. So, yeah i mean it's tough because it's like especially if it's a band you care about that's like what they get yeah. you're just kind of taking the writing gig and like write this book about third eye blind or something and you're like it, whatever be hard for me. i mean yeah i was gonna know, say I, would it be that hard much hard harder to write about something i don't care about you know yeah yeah Totally. Like, yeah, it comes it. through that you, you know, are, are a legit Cure fan really early on in this because of, you know, other Cure books, you know, not to get into them and stuff, but as far as other sources, you know, I was curious about with you too, but like, you know, I always kind of question, you know, if the author is like really cares or not, you know, or how much there was just research or if it was, you know, legit Cure opinion kind of thing. Yeah. So, uh, I, I don't know. I think it, it means a lot more coming from a, a, a diehard Cure fan for sure. Mm -hmm. I appreciate it. I'm definitely a diehard fan. I mean, I've been a fan since, since really, you know, the Kiss Me era. That was sort right of my on. big introduction to the Cure, being in the states and, you know, obviously sitting on a beach. You know, that was the first big intro a lot of U.S. fans had to the Cure. Yeah. And so um, I didn't catch that. It was really Kiss Me, Kiss Me, Kiss Me, okay. and the video for Just Like Heaven, and I just was like blown away by it. Awesome. Um, and I bought the cassette single. I remember hearing the b-side chain flowers i thought oh my gosh this is yeah. you know because i've been in top 40 you know i've listened to i was an mtv child yeah, yeah. So i was on new too. wave and top 40 and hadn't really veered off into sort of quote-unquote alternative kind of stuff yeah and i bought on cassette kiss me kiss me kiss me and xtc skylarking on the same day <laughs> nice <laughs> um, and i remember like listening to them both back to back and i was like holy shit this is fucking amazing this is like the best thing i've ever heard in my life you know yeah and i just from that point i just bought the back catalog you know as i could one by one by one yeah and just devoured it you know and i've been a huge fan ever since that's awesome yeah we like to do the occasional uh we call them the origin tale episodes and stuff where we just have people we've been talking to and and you know try to get those kind of stories and like what what was the initial attraction and stuff <laughs> and it, it is funny how many of them were the just like heaven video in particular you know they'll yeah. see that and be like god oh, they just look so cool that song is just so good and, and it's a perfect I mean, song and you know it just blew. i just i was mesmerized by it. i really was i'm still mesmerized by it it's one of those songs i never get tired of listening to yeah it's crazy yeah. isn't it it's like yeah. it, it should be at least a little tired by now but it's like no it's you know not. i was like <laughs> just, i was just making just some won't. christmas presents for my niece got a, she wants to get a walkman because like you know Ga guardians of the galaxy or something so needed some tapes for it so i was making a tape mix for her, you know and she nice. had all these like ones on there that she wanted for sure but she hadn't really 
her cure specific and i was like oh, i'm gonna totally start off side two with just like heaven you know <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> i was just like and yeah, even i just like put that. it on and i was like oh man it still sounds as good now you know just maybe that idea of like this might be yeah. the first time she's really listened to it or something but that's that's so. great because that's that you know you never know like exposing someone to that song or so, any kind of music really is a great thing but like it's just you know i wonder like how things would have been different if i hadn't heard that song when i heard it you know yeah it's like, the butterfly effect you know yeah, <laughs> like, yeah totally yeah and i was about like, the same yeah. time frame too it was like i got standing on the beach but somehow i missed like kiss me had just come out but i got standing on the beach um and heard some oldies from a friend and then i kind of knew yeah. kiss me was out there but it was the double album so i never had quite enough money for it <laughs> so yeah, it's kind I, of I like the same thing like it's kind of the same thing yeah i actually got a dub copy of standing on a beach like but it was right after i got kiss me because this yeah. dude i went to junior high his brother was like the older dude who had the cool music you know yeah. he done a copy of standing on the beach so i got it and the, the b-sides like right after kiss me so it was almost like a one-two punch yeah totally so that's that's enough yeah then you gotta do the backtrack which was so fun i wish there was more albums so we could still be backtracking oh, and get <laughs> that was the best feeling in the some, world <laughs> i wish they were a little more prolific when they were recording so like you know have a ton of outtakes and things like that like unreleased tracks and stuff yeah, like that. Yeah, totally. a little more prince like you know <laughs> yeah totally it'll all come out at some point all these albums he's uh yeah. <laughs> well, like, kind yeah, of mentioning yeah. but um i was really fanatical about it because like I went, you know, because, you know, for example, Charlotte sometimes obviously is not on a record. And I didn't really understand that yeah. concept at the time. And I went to the record store and I'm like, what album is this on? I'm missing something. <laughs> you know, right. I need to find out where to order this record. And the, the girl looked at me. She's like, I don't know. You know, she's, I don't see it in the system. And like, there's, I stood at the counter for like 20 minutes trying to figure <laughs> this out. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. It's a... And it's like, I wanted that record, but it. Uh, obviously didn't exist so. yeah so now it makes sense <laughs> yeah it's crazy because yeah you wouldn't have you know at best you'd get one of the, like that visual documentary book or something that had the discography where you'd start to yeah. put the pieces together and like yeah so I was like, like standalone what? single didn't really make sense to me I yeah, didn't really understand totally. it at the time you know it's it like, like the glove the what the fuck is this it was like exactly. somebody had just been smart and shelved it with the cure stuff so I was all like well yeah. it's clearly him on it I'm buying it <laughs> yeah well, I was like I'm missing something I, I have a missing cure album out there somewhere and i just i was like obsessive about it for like a day and I, I finally just i don't know i was just i guess realized that it just was just a single yeah <laughs> life goes on but, but cure fans tend to be obsessive like that you yeah know? yeah definitely it seems to cover a lot but uh so yeah going back on the book idea though and being a, a passionate fan and stuff and, and and knowing a lot of the content going into writing it i'm sure um did you find it hard to keep that balance like we talked about of like not getting too opinionated but at the same time well making i mean sure you, I, you know, voiced it or did I, it come naturally it was hard for me to figure out exactly the right level to go with because you know like when my articles i tend to sort of be over the top a little bit tongue-in-cheek you know almost yeah. in my language you know i tend to sort of use strange descriptions sometimes and I thought, well, maybe I should tone it down a little bit. But then I was like, well, no, that's what they liked. They liked the writing, the articles. That's why I got the book deal to begin with. So I'm just going to go right. with my usual style. And so I was just talking about the song in my head and what it meant to me in terms of how it made me feel or what it does. And then I would throw in some sort of factoids. And I really wanted it to cover every single song, yeah. every single studio track in their catalog, which, you know, so I just went with sort of... Um, my personal analysis backed up by research, which I would go through and see what Robert had said about a song and sort of, you know, I wouldn't, I wouldn't, you know, necessarily completely contradict him. Sometimes yeah. you have to take what he says with a grain of salt. Though. <laughs> totally. It's a yeah. later question I had. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's like, man, that's gotta be um, tough. So it's a fine line to walk, you know, yeah, yeah. but a lot of the songs, you know, just so doo -doo 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 came very quickly. It's like, I just, you know, and then some of them I had to labor over quite a bit, yeah. you know, I didn't really know what to say about them. Um, yeah, I guess for the people out there too, the the layout of the book in itself is is cool, and usually something I'm like, eh, I'd rather just be a whole main thing than I have to dig into. But I really dig the the format. Uh, I, I guess you said that it's an FAQ kind of thing that they do. Yeah, that's normally. really the, the one okay. thing with the FAQ series, which I don't, I did not mind at all, is they they wanted short chapters, mm -hmm. self contained. So there's 35 chapters in this book, and each chapter is about a particular album or some other aspect of the Cure's career, like the 
or in, in video or yeah. you know something like that. And so it's almost like a reference book in some ways. If you want to read about this integration, you just it's look foot. forward to chapter 22 or 24 or whatever chapter it is. And there it is. It's just integration. Yeah. And it's self-contained. So it's almost like writing 35 standalone articles. articles yeah, totally. Which I can see was a lot easier than doing a continuous narrative would have been. You know? Right, like in the beginning. The, gra- yeah. <laughs> Grandpa Robert yeah. Smith. <laughs> so yeah, that can be a bit daunting and dry too. So yeah, I, I, yeah. I love that. And I love that it wasn't just the albums and the singles and stuff, but then you would have those little in between, there's like little chapters in between that correspond with the era, you know, like there's a, you did a really cool goth one before faith and there's a little, um, like Susie section right in between glove and and the top kind of thing, you know, they're all these well-placed kind of sub you know, it's totally like what I love doing with the podcast where we kind of have the main album things as the focus or whatever we're talking about, but then we can kind of bounce around it with the tours and stuff like that. And you have like great sections on that and the whole little debacles kind of just condensed into one section there and it comes up again and they come up in different little sections, but at the same time, it, it's really cool and, and, and perfect for this podcast. So uh, yeah. I would definitely uh, yeah, be flipping but... back to your book if that's cool with you and uh, citing you, of course. But any any refreshers I need, this is perfect for this kind of thing where I'm like, <laughs> it's awesome. like yeah, the top, I, I should probably brush up on what, whatever was going on on that, you know? And uh, so, yeah, like yeah. you said, it's a perfect reference too. But I mean, like each, each album is sort of like the guidepost chapter, mm-hmm. you know, those are the main chapters, the backbone of the book. Yeah. You know? And to me, that's what the book is all about. The music. I didn't want to get into like the personal life, really. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know that kind of stuff. I'm not really interested in that. Um, and, you know. And so you talk about that a little bit, but it's like the music is what it's all about. And so I wanted the albums to sort of be the boom, 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 and then everything surrounding those albums kind of fit in the middle between. You yeah. Know? And I think it worked out pretty well. Yeah, totally. Especially if, yeah, if it's all the stuff that kind of bleeds into it, you know, like when it isn't so much music related, but like the relationship of what happened with Susie and the Banshees and stuff is is crucial to what happens next, you know. So That's they true. are, That's you know, true. and even Lowell's stuff, it's more of like that bridge of where they went after that and why, you know, and the time period in between and what was going on. So it is yeah. all that feeling. Some the of gap, that has so. to be, you know, there has to be a little bit of repetition, you know, because you know from time to time i find myself like repeating something that i'd already said yeah. in like the lol chapter but it it has to be there mm. say in kiss me or you're not going to get the big picture if you if you're just reading that chapter as a standalone chapter you know what i mean yeah exactly so, so there are a few little things where i felt myself kind of like just trying to keep it brief if if it was something that i already said but there are some repetitions just yeah. because of that layout but yeah. you know i think that's necessary and i don't think it was no, nah, like, nah, it totally felt like just the, you know, recap at the beginning of a show kind of thing where you're never yeah. offended by it or anything. <laughs> it's just yeah, like, that's, that's, so that's it's, exactly it's cool. right. That's, so, yeah. That's exactly what I was and, and yeah, and it's just a huge credit to your writing style, again, of just like the idea that it flowed so nice and, you know, it wasn't too overly you know, like music journalist feeling and it wasn't too opinionated and stuff, but I just really found that you can kind of just breeze through each section and like totally talking to somebody, you know, like talking to you now, but, it, <laughs> but I, I really enjoyed that. It, 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 it's, it makes a huge difference. <laughs> That's exactly what I was, you know, I, I, I don't like to be too negative, you know, um, even if it's something, and I, and I do, I don't shy away from putting my opinion in there. Yeah. A lot of what I talk about in the book is, what a particular song is about and you know that's going to be my opinion you know unless it's something that robert said exactly but i do a lot of my own interpretation a lot of my own analysis yeah and some of it is probably like out from you know from my field um i'm not afraid to do that but also i don't want to be too negative when it comes to something i don't like and i really for example like you know the last album yeah the last two albums really i really didn't care for that much you right know, and, but i tr- i don't want to dog them too badly because honestly people love those records there are people there are fans who love those records yeah. they mean a lot to those fans and so i don't want to denigrate those fans and their taste you know and it's just my opinion it's just one person <laughs> yeah no, <laughs> no that's it's so perfect I, I try to be objective about it and um as, as objective as possible and, and try not to be too snarky i i really hate that yeah when writers get really snarky about music and get condescending about it 
I, I just really despise that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I agree. <laughs> so uh, yeah, and it happens all the time. Yeah, yeah, it's it's hard to tell if they're even doing it intentionally or if it's just them personality wise coming through or yeah. what. <laughs> and the little side comments like you know, oh, you know, I went to the Cure show and it was all these goth children who wanted to look like Robert Smith and they're like all miserable and like you know, all that stuff. I just yeah. I find really lazy and just condescending and boring and I hate it when I read that because it tells me that the writer didn't delve into the topic at all. Yeah. Yeah, I totally agree. That was something I was like, didn't even jot down on my notes to say to you, but like just the way that you, you enter it with the perfect level of like, whoever's reading this obviously is familiar with the cure, you know, so you don't have to like dwell on the, on the makeup and the hair, you know what I mean? And it was just, there's very minimal. Most, most of the people reading this, are going to be your fans yeah so like, i don't need to like you know <laughs> baby stuff totally smart yeah you're not introducing the band to anybody at this point nobody's like ah, i like friday i'm in love i'm gonna read this entire book about it <laughs> you, <know? laughs> so well, it's, you never know <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah that's, awesome, awesome. that's, that's kind of what we tried to do in the podcast initially too we're just like you know if anyone's listening to this shit you know it's not gonna be somebody that's just <laughs> remotely <laughs> curious it's a, <laughs> yeah so, which is fine you know yeah. and it's a little intimidating though because you know like Cure fans know their shit, you know. Yeah. <laughs> they know their shit, and I was terrified. And I'm sure that there's got to be, you know, a, a mistake here or there. Like I hope not, but I, you know, I was really, really vigilant about trying to get all the facts right. Yeah. And and because my name is on it, for one thing, and for another, Cure fans know their shit. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's, there's it's gonna daunting. Be, yeah, there'll be a ding, 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 ding. If there's like some glaring error, you know, I, I'll never hear the end of it, you know? Yeah. Yeah. They get and, very um, uh, defensive too. Cause yeah, they could be the sweetest people in the world, you know, but, but yeah. yeah, you just wrong one little fact here and there. They'll burn you. Yeah. This <laughs> yeah. But, but no, you did an amazing job with that too. That's what I love about it. It was just like everything, you know, if I'm familiar with a story or something, you would, touch on it and if anything there'd be a little extra tidbits and stuff it's like oh i never heard that part before that's cool you know and like it actually adds a lot so i think all cure fans out there will love it for that reason where it's like a good refresher of the story you know you know and a lot of those stories like we're going back to the idea of, of robert you know if you're pulling from interviews and shit he's he's definitely not the the easiest to be like well the song's about <laughs> and you just have to yeah. kind of pick yeah, one right. story or not you know a lot of them have multiple meanings and stories and stuff and you know even within yeah. within the band you know like roger will post something about you know disintegration and some and then they'll say that didn't happen at all you know <laughs> so, exactly so exactly <laughs> but, um, and sometimes I'll, i even went into that like you know the, you know robert is a genius at myth making you know yeah. he really is and it's, it's helped his career in a huge way and um he does it very very skillfully yeah <laughs> and and sometimes you know roger o'donnell or one of the others will m- make a comment that will sort of puncture something that you know but it does it's okay you know it's yeah. okay like you know all, all the stuff about the recording of pornography for instance you know yeah. robert really really went over the top in terms of like how horrible things were when it was recorded and they were writing, you know, recording in the bathroom, there were trash everywhere and like, you know, <laughs> this, that and drugs and they hated each other and all this. And, you know, Phil Thornally, who's the producer, right. he doesn't remember, you know, any of that. Right. You, know? <laughs> <laughs> you know, and so, I mean, not, not, not to completely wipe it out. Like, you know, he did, he did say some of that stuff went on, but it was yeah. much more prosaic than Robert leads on. Yeah, and yeah. so part of that is just, creating an aura for the record right. for what it sounds like for the fans sort of a frame a framing it in their minds and every description you read of pornography or just every description you read of disintegration talks about how he was dreading his 30th birthday and he was doing drugs and this and that so it's framed that way yeah. already and he, he did that he did that intentionally yeah, yeah. <laughs> and he a genius you know yeah and you know, then you see the pictures of them having a blast, you know, hanging out. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but at the yeah. same time, too, it's like, uh, you know, I guess anything, like any story, everyone's gonna have a different version of what happened, you know, That's, at the yeah, party yeah. or whatever, you know. So it's, you know, some yeah, credit there. Yeah, an album like it takes a you know a long time to re- to record, and it's it's ups and downs and ins and outs, and there's changes in vibe throughout, you know. Yeah, for sure. It's, 
Yeah, um, I was going to ask then on your sources and stuff, did you go through a lot of the old interviews, like uh, as far as like video, yes. literally pretty much everything? Yeah, I bet you covered it. Everything I could get my hands on. <laughs> so I, I, I really did. And, and I would just take notes as I was going. I had an open note um, document on each chapter and on each sort of subtopic that I might want to, you know, talk about. Yeah. And I just read through everything I could get my hands on and just made notes. Um, you know, old articles, interviews, you know, um, every book, I think I've read pretty much most of the books. Yeah. Um, a lot of the old, um, fan club interviews, I yeah. thought were really good. Yeah. The those are great to like cure news and stuff. Or... Yeah. 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 yeah those those are... were really, really good. I thought, um, some of the old articles and, you know, like there were a few pivotal articles that I thought were really good. Like. The one he did during the Wish period for Guitar World. Yeah, I remember um, in that. In 92. Yeah. That was a really, really good article. Very informative. Um, there, there, are, there are a few that I really relied on, but I tried to get as much. I, I tried to cast a wide net, mm -hmm. a very wide net, and, and just get as much information as I could. Yeah. And even from fans, you know, you go on some of the sites and read fan commentary because that could go, oh, wait, ding, 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 ding. That's exactly right. Yeah. You know? yeah. That's awesome. Where you wouldn't necessarily see that elsewhere. Yeah, for sure. So I really tried to cast a wide net, and um, I, I just wanted new information. I didn't that's want to cool. rehash the same shit over and over again. Yeah. And, you know, obviously the stuff that's necessary is, is there. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> yeah. Because <laughs> it has I to mean, be. It's... It has to be. But I wanted to try to liven it up a bit with information and, and you know, I really worked hard on it. <laughs> yeah, it it shows. Like I was gonna say, like no cure stone was left unturned. You know, as far as I, I didn't, I don't think I read one section and was all like, ah, he didn't mention, you know, whatever, you know, <laughs> you know. Yeah, like, I, I've really felt like every little possible thing, every little remix got mentioned, every little thing. I was just like, man, yeah. this dude covered it all. And like you're saying, casting a wide net on the sources where I never. I couldn't even pinpoint what was like your go-to, you know, like I won't mention other past cure coffee table books or anything, but it's just so clear that they were like, you know, paraphrasing from another cure book yes. I read or something. Yeah. You did, did an awesome job with that. So. <laughs> Thank you. I appreciate that. It's, I, I run, I, I wanted to avoid that, that in particular. And, um, and you know, just, you know, I, I, I'm really happy with how it came out. Like, I got to say, like, I was very nervous, very, very nervous and apprehensive about finally getting the final copy and like reading through it uh -huh. and catching this and that. And, oh, there's a screw up. Oh, no, look at this. Oh, crap. That got published. You know? <laughs> and so far, so good. Like, I... <laughs> I've been okay with it, you know, which is, is kind of cool. That's cool. Yeah. I think I was starting to message you the other day where I was just... You know, I, I record music and I think most musicians to a certain degree, or it's like, it's never done. You know, you could yeah. literally sit there with it. I'm sure it's probably on the same with something like this, Absolutely. where you could yeah. sit there and, and rephrase something or add something else or take something out like all day. So it's good to, and Robert yeah. Smith, you know, obviously. Totally. I could just keep going and keep going and keep going. And it's like, at some point you just have to say, stop, stop. You have to stop. <laughs> which, which does bring up the question then with all this new stuff coming up, do you think there'll be a, a revised version? And are you going to have oh, to? Gosh. <laughs> I doubt it. I doubt they'll do a revised version, but um, uh, it was hard, you know, because right up until the point, let me tell you, dude, uh, like the point that I had to turn in the, 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 proofs the final proofs uh -huh. my, my review of the proofs was the was the very weekend that simon gallup dropped his bombshell yeah <laughs> so i'm like i still have time technically i could sneak something in right yeah about this. but what am i supposed to say because we didn't know anything no and it yeah. had to be in like right then it had to be in like that it, there was no more time yeah so i couldn't wait for it to play out so i was like shit what do i do yeah. i'm just gonna ignore it yeah because there was nothing to say you know I could have added to his section like newsflash simon left the group you yeah. know and, <laughs> and no one knows why and, or if no it's, one knows if why it's real. you know <laughs> you know exactly it's like get online and to find out what yeah happened. go you to facebook Twitter, and you know. if I don't. Exactly. <laughs> so that wouldn't have worked out yeah, very well so geez, I, I, you know i talked to the publisher and like they agree with me it's like just ignore it you know yeah. so that's what i did yeah, yeah. i actually wrote a big section up about it but i mean not you know what i knew yeah which was nothing and, right. and i dropped it thing you know and that was the right decision 
you know but it was kind of like that the cures had stuff happening you know you know they, yeah they've been, they've and thank god you didn't there. though because i mean you know then he posts oh i'm back and then tour cool so like I, I, there's pretty good chance this is like never gonna come up ever again <laughs> exactly. just like what yeah. was that all about you know like if you exactly. left this horrible yeah. cliffhanger it's like it does it even matter yes. anymore the cure is done exactly you know? <laughs> that would have been terrible that would have been it's awful, like, that been awful. Uh, so, yeah jeez so, yeah that's crazy but um yeah so i don't know hopefully they'll you, know, you can do a little online added version for the whatever <laughs> bonus tracks yeah. for the deluxe reissue. <laughs> well, I hope so. Like, you know, I, I would love to, I, you know, I'm trying to figure out what to do next for my second book. And, yeah. um, I would love to go back. I'm definitely going to write about the cure, you know, some more, yeah. um, in articles and so forth. Uh, if, if not another, you know, who knows what will happen down the road. I, I haven't seen any revised or expanded editions of the FAQ books. Okay. Um, but I don't know. Maybe they maybe they do exist. I'm not yeah. sure. <laughs> yeah, there's tell. eighty of them. So <laughs> cool. Yeah. Do you have anything set or in mind that you want to do next, or where's it? What's I, my my current thought is I want to do something. I probably won't do an FBQ book. Right. Well, I might. I might. If I do, I'm I'm thinking maybe Eurythmics. Okay. Um, I really like I like Eurythmics a lot. Cool. And I think they would be a good topic. Yeah. Something music related uh, though, no matter what avenue you it, think. Um, probably music related. Yeah, it'll definitely be music related. Um, I, I have this idea of doing something about sad songs. Like I really like to write about sad songs. Damn. They really capture me and I can write about them really well. And they're important to people, you know, for various reasons. Yeah. And so those, that's sort of where my head is right now in terms of something to do with like the saddest songs, um, you know, but I'm still sort of thinking about it. Um, I have to submit a proposal to my agent and um, then to the publisher. Um, so fingers crossed. <laughs> awesome. Yeah, that'd be cool. But, that'd yeah, be... I'm just kind of just uh, probably waiting out the, the year and then I'll start really focusing on it in January. Yeah. Cool deal. Um, so yeah, I guess with the with the cure stuff that is popping up, are, are you gonna make any trips to Europe, or have you decided? Oh, uh, dude, I hope so. I'd love to. I've never been to Europe. You yeah, know. Um, me neither. Um, I would love to go. I've been to a bunch of shows. You know, my favorite, probably, I gotta say, the Dream Tour. You know, two thousand. I thought they were phenomenal. Yeah, that was a great tour. And you mentioned um, you would spent some time in D.C. Were you at the Merryweather one? Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. I awesome. was at Merryweather. Yeah, I was, I was there at that too, show. Man. It was just a little drizzly. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that was a great show. Yeah, it was really cool. Like one of the ones I didn't even fully appreciate at the time. You know, looking back at the yeah. cool like Faith Encore and everything, I was just like, man, oh, that yeah. was yeah, yeah. I remember just being yeah. like, you know, like so many Cure shows where I'm like, this is the last time I'm ever going to, you know. <laughs> I know. <laughs> but, it feels that way, though, doesn't yeah, it? Yeah, you know, and, it, and it's you a know, good, it's, it's, as much as it is fun to make fun of the way that's come up so much, it is a good way to approach everything in life, you know. Yeah, it's like, and it might be, and it's, it's, yeah. it, is, it, is, it is a good way to approach things, especially, you know, for, for Robert and the Cure, because it, look at what happened with Simon. Like, it could yeah, very well have been totally. the last show, you know. yeah. Totally, um, yeah. and they, that was an amazing show. Like, but yeah, I, I, I don't know if I'll be traveling to Europe, but I hope that they announce some U.S. dates. I would assume they probably will. Yeah, that was kind of where I was all, you know, like, oh man, I don't, I don't have the money to do this Europe thing. But then my wife yeah, was strangely can't... encouraging it. She was like, "You should just go. They're gonna, you know, not be around too much longer." And I'm like, so "Stop saying that." <laughs> and I was like, "I think that they'll 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 truck around for another three or four years as my guest because yeah. they got a lot of material in the can, you know." Yeah, totally. So they, they've unless... got two albums worth from this last, you know, and then they still have leftover stuff from from the four thirteen dream that has never, you know, existed. Yeah. And my thought is that Robert's putting out. The 67 hour minute record that they talk about with the new tour dates you know um that's substantially less music than he recorded so yeah. they're probably gonna like you know not milk it but you know break it up. revisit yeah. those tracks and hopefully another tour another tour yeah you know i can see a couple more tours hopefully yeah. that's just wishful thinking you know <laughs> Ta -da. yeah who knows what could happen in the world in any angle yeah, but at exactly. the same time uh yeah, I mean, and they've proven that they don't even need an album at this point. You could tour That's for so 13 more years without an album, you know. I That's think everybody true. would be totally fine with that, you know. And, That's true. and they've never sounded better, honestly. I think yeah, they sound it's fantastic. it's crazy, isn't it? Know? It's like they sound so good. And, uh, yeah, the, the Hyde Park show, like the Meltdown show, mm -hmm. you know, the Hall of Fame, they sound phenomenal. They're fantastic. And Reeves 
really adds another dimension to the band. You know, I know a lot of people are kind of like, yeah, yeah, it's not really the cure, but like his guitar solo on a night like this, yeah, you know, he transforms that song totally. Yeah, he adds know. so much cool stuff in. I'm, I'm really dying to hear the new record. Almost for that is one of the main factors, you know, just to hear what he would do on new cure yeah. songs I haven't heard, where he's really just able to cut loose or add like a cool. That, that's, yeah that's that's i'm excited about that too man that'll um, be rad i think he's a tremendously talented musician and he brings a lot you know he brings a lot yeah for sure but yeah it's crazy how, how well they're holding up you know we you, you really do a good part at the end there of the book of talking about the legacy and all the different factors of why and they should keep going and what, what will they be remembered for and such that I won't totally spoil it for the people out there, but, uh, but I really, yeah. I really liked it. And the idea of, like you're saying, just, you know, the, the diversity of the songs and everything. And, and, and most importantly, the idea of that they still care, you know, and you see oh. it in those live shows of how much he fucking loves just playing these long ass shows. I mean, they're playing longer shows, now than they were even you know and i look back at old like kiss me tours and stuff you know it's like man they weren't wow. even doing that <laughs> back yeah, then and, yeah, so. and it's like and robert like he's i can't there may be a couple other artists that maybe i can think of but like mm-hmm. you know for him to understand the dynamic of like how important these songs are to the fans yeah and to throw out these nuggets like you know he understands what a thrill it is in say 2022 for the fans to hear like doubt or you know yeah. something like you know some of you know besides you know throw your foot like in the pop section or something yeah you know? it just like something like that would just it just makes just, people smile and it creates a memory that is you know that they'll never forget yeah and um he understands that and you know and he knows those casual fans who just want to hear the hits you know mm-hmm. and there's nothing wrong with that that's totally cool and so i think he does the best balancing act when it comes to creating set lists yeah. of anybody that I can think of in music, because he just nails it for the fans, the, the diehard fans, and he nails it for the casual fans too. Mm-hmm. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, it depends on the city even, and yeah, there'll be little nods yeah. to this and that. I mean, it would be yeah. so easy at this point in their career for him to just come out and play the greatest hits, and you know, and right. that, and that they would they still that even be rad. But game. you know, but yeah, the festival things were closest to that, you know. But yeah. like, which is fine. Yeah, it's, yeah. So, it's understandable. But you know he's they're so good at creating sets, and um, each each tour is such an event, you know. Yeah. And um, I, I definitely will see them on this coming tour. If yeah. I, if, if yeah. They hopefully they said it. they're going to announce some some other rest of the world dates soon. So that would be yeah. cool. I would definitely. Uh gonna try it. that's where I kind of where i fell with the european one where i was like well the money i would spend to fly over there figure out what the hell i'm doing and where i would stay and you know it's like i could see like three more shows here if i just exactly. you know i've never really done like the crazy multi you know i think i saw two in a row in in 2016 and that was usually i would just see the one that was in my city but uh but yeah, yeah I've never done that with the cure either. Yeah. Um, I'd love to do that. I just, I just the money is not there. Yeah, but exactly. Like, <laughs> like, so. But like, uh, it would be a lot of fun. And you know, you know, you're going to get a totally different show. Yeah. You know, it's not like you know, and there's, there's, it's going to be some changes for sure. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and uh, so yeah, would you say twenty uh, the Dream Tour two thousand then was your ultimate cure live I mean, experience? Or? I think it was for me. Now I didn't see you know I didn't see them on Disintegration. Yeah. You know my first time seeing them was on Wish. Yeah, so, me too. Yeah, I mean that was great, but like um, the Dream Tour, I thought you know, and even listening to you know recordings and you know watching videos of, of the tours, I really thought that they were at a peak in two thousand. I thought that that album was really good. It translated well towards mixing it up with some of the older songs that fit that vibe you know like yeah. sinking or i still hear that simon gallup bass line on sinking yeah. you know, it's, like, <laughs> it's just like you know it just it just rocks my brain yeah you know? totally. and like so that's what to me was was really really good but i like 2016 too and that you know yeah that was really excellent as well they threw in a lot of surprises in that in that tour yeah, Which just I throwing really out those cool. occasional B sides and stuff are, yeah. are great. Which they've never really done a lot of. No, nah, yeah, that's that's something that's kind of strange from because for songs that were sort of borderline on the album or off the album, you know, they they ignored them. You know, they really were never a band that did B sides routinely. Yeah, um, and that's a little bit surprising to me. 
Yeah, for so many good ones there are, for sure. Yeah, I mean, like you're saying, just dropping that one nugget, you know. Uh, hopefully, yeah. he'll even catch on to that more. But I think he's pretty aware of it. You know, it's like yeah, I think he's become it's, more aware of it. Like yeah. now, maybe since he did join the dots, you know. But it seems these days he is throwing them in more often. Like yeah. he did too late, and he did the exploding boy and things yeah. like that. But like before that, like early, you know, for the most part throughout their history, they have not even you know they've rarely made a b-side part of the regular set they did for kiss me up the japanese dream was a part of the set right um, yeah. and i'm trying to think of other examples but there really aren't that many yeah yeah it's really weird like just having a song that amazing and you're like nah not even gonna half-ass yeah. it or you know it's like you yeah. don't even have to you don't even yeah. have to nail it man just play like twilight garden and everyone's gonna oh, lose God, their shit know. you know <laughs> like, that one that one like, that one i would love to see that one yeah for sure or, you know i don't think they've ever done chain of flowers i'm aware of nah. that one would be that one would be epic for sure yeah um, totally so many good uh, ones. Anyway, like um, I could do, totally do my fan, my cure fantasy. Yeah, so we'll save that for uh, <laughs> right before the tour. There, we can exactly. totally nerd out. You this and this and this and this. And that. A fun <laughs> nerd question we like to ask everybody too is: um, if you had the time machine show, is there one specific show or an era or a tour that you would definitely check out for the I cure mean, in the past? I would fucking love to go back to the. Um, 20, um, 2004 Mexico City. Oh, um, yeah, yeah, La Mega. That's like, it was his birthday, and yeah. it was like a five hour show. Yeah, yeah. It's just fun. because of the length of it. Yeah. <laughs> but, gonna go... There's the, there's the um, Royal Albert Hall show. I was, um, I'm trying to figure out what year that was. Maybe, I can't remember. And 2013, 2014, maybe. They did a couple of benefit shows at the yeah. end of the year at the, in London, and they were they were really cool set lists and i've seen parts of them on youtube but yeah i, watched the whole I think i have a very shitty bootleg of one of those that's yeah. a... <laughs> that would be good yeah. and then old school like oh gosh you know i i, I just I don't know if I <laughs> the early tours. That would be a sort of an anthropological visit, you know. Yeah, exactly. Um, <laughs> like standing around doing I mean, like the pornography stuff, or just like it would just be like this fact finding mission. It would be so fascinating to see. You know? Totally. Yeah, was, I'd go to any of them. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, because you you want to go back to like yeah, those pornography ones must have been off the wall of just like nuts. Oh gosh, I can't and even imagine like, it's like it's twenty just... people there. Yeah. <laughs> like, you're gonna be in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame someday, dude. Yeah. You know that, right? <laughs> All bleeding out of his eyes and shit. I was like, what is happening? <laughs> but, um... I'm like, I'm like, uh, you know, this is just this is just too much. Yeah. It, would, it would be awesome to see that. Like, you can can you imagine like seeing being at one of those shows and thinking like all these years into the future that they're going to be playing stadiums all over the world for yeah. years to come, years to come, you know, and be one of the biggest bands in the world. It's just, I, it's hard to have envisioned it. I, yeah. I can't imagine, you know. Yeah, it's got to be so surreal even still to them, you know, playing these things. Yeah. It's, it's pretty bonkers. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it is. It's like even thinking about it now, like just me growing up listening to what I did, I never would have thought, you know, never would have thought they would have, been so big but you know they deserve it yeah you know? yeah it is nice it was just yeah that era which i'm saying is roughly around the same time and you know it was like they were still big i guess by that point but at the same time nobody in like the public schools knew you yeah. know it was only like that handful of kids that you know you'd kind of nod to each yeah. other if you're wearing the t-shirt and stuff but like yeah you'd still get you know, i don't people. think i realized how big they were at that time honestly yeah. internationally like when I was just discovering them with just like heaven and kiss me, I, I don't think I realized that then how big they were like in Europe and South America. Right. And yeah. It's nuts. But even something about it still, even like through disintegration, even like I remember like distinct memories of when wish I was a freshman in high school then. And like Friday in love was getting everywhere, you know, and like, mm -hmm. and it was kind of like my local band was getting big, you know, where somehow they were able to trick you into thinking <laughs> that they were nice. like the, like the small little band, you know? And it was like, no, nah, mm -hmm. man, but th I think that's what everybody's so personal about them. You know, they make you even now, you know, that's why people get defensive about the facts or, you know, if you bash an album mm -hmm. or something, you know, it's like, I think people hold them so dear to their heart that it is kind of like knocking your friend's Absolutely. band or something, you yeah, know? It's I think like... you're right. You're right. It's, it's, they care. The, Robert and the band, they're, they're genuine about everything they do, and the fans get that. And so they can sort of safely embrace it. 
where they know it's not sort of artifice, if that makes sense. Yeah, totally. And like, it's real. Like, and Robert's not chasing pop hits, you know, mm -hmm. he'll put out some pop songs on each album, sure, but like, he's not trying to get 13 songs in the top 10, you know? Yeah. And, and so whenever they do cross into the mainstream, it's sort of, the mainstream sort of veers in their direction for a brief time. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You know, it's like they'll, and then it veers off, they'll yeah. ride the wave, but they're never really chasing it. Like you, you did a real good job of mentioning that in the book a lot where you come back to it, like they're different moments of peak mainstream success and stuff or how cool it is that they, you know, cause that's kind of the, even doing the podcast, I was a little bit surprised of like seeing how many times he threw the curveball with the music of like just trying to do the complete opposite of what people were expecting. You know, it's like mm -hmm. I always kind of knew it, but when you're really kind of looking at each album and going through stuff, it's like, man, it really is just all the way through kind of like, all right, well, what are they not expecting? I'm going to do this now. And, you know, and it might be something yeah. they've already kind of done before, but at the same time, you weren't expecting that at all then, you know, and, you know, and it's, it is cool Oof. that he, he didn't, never really compromised anything almost to a stubborn degree. A lot of times they you know, <laughs> probably could have never, <laughs> like really capitalized did. on something way bigger than they did, you know, and it's like, yeah, it's, he never did. And, you know, that's, that's another reason why, you know, people get that they're genuine and, because they never compromise, and um, that's I don't, that's really rare and almost almost unique in yeah. in their on their level of fame in the in the rock industry. Because you know the pop rock world is very fickle. Yeah. You know people people like to build them up and tear them down, and you know careers don't last that long. You have that kind of dynamic where you can sort of ride the wave, and very few artists have been able to do that. And the Cure have they've been able to because Robert. They do their own thing always and they don't compromise and they just lay it out where it goes. And, you know, it's like fans have been willing to go with them mm -hmm. um, because they put the time into it. It's always compelling to one degree or another. Yeah. It's always compelling. And, you know, it's just, it speaks to the soul. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. It's all about, you know. Yeah. And I think people kind of fade in and out with certain things, but at the same time, I find that like really encouraging for the new album where it's like, like you said, where it's, you know, the self-titled and 413 weren't my favorites by any means, but at the same time, this new one, you know, I still have all the faith in the world for it in the yeah. sense that he is taking so much time and caring about it, you know, and it is yeah, a little I something agree. to be said for that, where even if it is totally <laughs> like, whoa, this is horrible when it comes out, I'll be like, well, at least I know he feels passionately about it at this point, <laughs> yeah. you know what I mean? That alone will make me love it to a certain degree, you know, where That's it's like, true. You know, it's, it's true like, because, and, 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 you know, with 413 and, and The Cure, like the same thing, like he, he was very vociferous in his you know he loved both the yeah. records, especially the cure he said if you don't like this record you don't like the cure right you know? <laughs> <That's> like, <huh? laughs> I'm myself, well <laughs> yeah, exactly but, you know when i came down to it and when i was doing the book for that record in particular like it kind of surprised me a little bit you know i i liked it more than i had remembered the you know yeah there were some really good songs on it and only a couple really marred it for me maybe two or three songs i really just just we're just like nails on chalkboard to me yeah that's... but like most of it's pretty good you yeah know? yeah and and so i thought okay this is better than i remembered and so that's part of one of the reasons why i tempered my language you know and, and made it really sort of objective and not too yeah. cranky because you know things change in your head as mm -hmm. a music listener i can listen to a song 20 years later and suddenly it clicks yeah you know and so if you you make it too vociferous at this point in time your your opinion might change. You're gonna regret it, yeah. yeah or or you might that, not. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Or even just the stuff you love, you know. Things are always shuffling around in your top fives or whatever, you know. And it's just like, oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah, it's, hard it's to like, do. yeah, that, that album's amazing, but you gotta just wear it out a bit and then give it a rest and come back to it, you know. And That's it's right. like, like I've listened to Wild Mood Swings definitely probably five times more yeah. than Disintegration in the past four or five years, only because. I've listened to Disintegration so many times. Right. <laughs> I can listen to it in my head from start to finish. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's funny. Yeah, I always come back to the ones that, you know, you hadn't quite butchered as much, you know, so exactly. it's like they get more <laughs> listens at this point. But do you have yeah. an ultimate top one then that you always put at the top? Of... And in terms of album? Yeah. Or, yeah, I mean, just, to me, Disintegration is, yeah. is you know, it's it's just, <clears throat> it's the pinnacle, you know. It's the pinnacle and it's, you know, it's easy to sort of 
fall into that sort of oh well disintegration everybody says that but it is yeah you know it is it's just there's a mood there's a vibe to it i remember when it came out i was in high school um i I went um after my sixth period or i guess it was fifth period my lunch break i walked into town bought the cassette and came back to school and then i couldn't wait to hear it and um I was blown away by it. I used to listen to it over and over and over and over again, start to finish, start to finish, yeah. start to finish. I mean, it was just, it was a cultural thing. It was like a personal thing, but it was, it really moved me. And um, it did the same to so many fans around the world. Yeah. So there's something to it. <laughs> yeah, it really is. And, really. Uh, I still love it. Yeah. Um, I don't listen to it as much as I used to because it's almost one of those special occasion kind of things. Right. You no. Know? And um, I like the single edits, actually. I like the mixes of the singles better than the album versions. Thank you. Um, yeah. Um, but, um, <clears throat> but for, yeah, Disintegration. And um, I like, uh, my, my song would be the same, Deep Waters You. Yeah. I just, uh, to me, that's that's the ultimate, you know. Yeah. That's, you like them, could, like them sad songs. That's the one for yeah. you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. that one's so good. Yeah. I yeah. couldn't think of anything to write about. That The, the little section on that song yeah. is tiny, because it just speaks for itself. Yeah. You know, there's nothing I could say. <laughs> yeah, I made a mental note of that. I was like, and I got that vibe where it was like, I could tell you just, loved it so much. And it was just like, just listen to the song kind of thing. Yeah, what are you going to say? You don't need to listen to my, <laughs> my babbling about it. Just like play it. You know? Yeah, I love that. Yeah, the, I mean, just that slow pace of it, but it never feels plotting at all. You know, it's oh, just, no. it's so like. It goes by so quickly for yeah. like 10 minutes long. Yeah, it's oh, crazy. Oh, oh, oh. And like the vocal on it, it's just stunning, absolutely stunning. Yeah, so, totally, man. Well, uh, yeah, yeah, I'm right there with you. It's like I always want to choose something else other than disintegration, but it's like yeah, I think that one's pretty cemented there at the top there, and the the other ones always kind of floating around and coming in and yeah. out. <laughs> but and it's not like you know, it's just it just is. It's really great. Yeah, you know, it's just really great. And I love the diversity of Kiss Me and. Um, you know, the head on the door is just not quite there. I mean, it's that close, but it's just, it's got a couple of throwaways on it, you know. Yeah. And Wish is great songwriting, but it doesn't have that emotion, that personal connection, you know. And then and from that point on, you, you get down a step. Yeah. So, and then the early ones I love, but they're all sort of one note in, 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 in a way. Yeah. <laughs> you know, in their, in their particular way, you know. And so, and disintegration to me has got, it combines everything. Yeah. Yeah. It's a good point. Yeah. Or it's like, that's something we've always said too, where it's like they took the dark shit from early, but then incorporate that into like the newfound pop ability, you know, like the, through Kiss Me and yeah. stuff of like he totally honed in on the pop song thing and, and you're able to make yeah, a dark melodies, song. Good that, melodies there too. Yeah, about, there's like, so many things. It's like all those little hooks in that song are like, or in any of the songs, you could you could base a whole song on just one of the riffs and you know, know. any of those songs, and there's like ten of them floating in and out. You know, it's like oh. crazy. Like love song, the 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 instrumental parts, how they interact with each other, and sort of, you know, it's just genius. Like there's all these little hooks coming from every direction, and Lullaby is the same way. Yeah, you know, it's almost like interlocking jigsaw puzzle pieces. Yeah. And each one's a little hook, you know. And it's just, it's so good. Yeah. And like, even the, the darker songs, like Plain Song, there are strong mel- there are strong melodic hooks in that song. Oh, yeah. yeah. In the yeah, orchestral sure. swell and in the little vocal. And, you know, you didn't have that on pornography. Like, yeah. the figurehead doesn't have those hooks, you know. Yeah. It's like, it's just, they had matured. They, they, he had learned more and more as he matured how to write good songs, good melodic songs. And disintegration, you know, it's just, it's just great. Sure. Yeah, well, can't agree with you more there. (laughs) (laughs) Awesome. Yeah, I just love it. I still love it. Well, uh, I'll let you go there. I don't want to keep you too long, but um, yeah, I do just want to uh, really stress out there that everybody should uh, check out this book, uh, Cure FAQ. Pretty much, if you search that into anything, um, it's it's really out there and all the. All the outlet at uh, like Amazon. What do we got? Uh, Barnes and Noble. I saw it on a Libris. Yeah, Target, thrifty books. All of them have it. So uh, yeah. no excuses. Uh, you can probably. I got my copy really quick when I ordered it. So maybe people can get it before yeah. Christmas. I'm and gonna if, try to get this out. As real you mentioned, fast, like but... if you pre-ordered it, like bef- like it, it's been on the pre-order list for a long time because yeah. it was delayed a couple of times. So if you pre-ordered it from the publisher directly over a year ago and you need to re- pre- pre-order it 
um, because I think they they zap those pre orders after a year. Okay, yeah, so reorder it. Um, do you have a preferred <laughs> outlet where uh, is it like I don't music? Really. Where, I mean, yeah, I, do. I don't. Cool. Whatever's well, easiest for the consumer, you know. Right on. Cool. Well, yeah, I, I mean, I really can't recommend it enough. Like I said, you, you know, you just did a great job with it. It's not easy to to dig up all those cure facts and make it readable. And, you know, like I said, you don't leave any cure stone unturned. And, you know. <laughs> Thank you. I appreciate it. I really appreciate it. I really do. Um, it means a lot. It was a lot of work. It was four years, you know, really from the time I signed the contract until the time it showed up sure, in yeah. my hand, you know? Yeah. Um, so it was a labor of love, but it was also a lot of, a lot of crazy things happening in the interim, up and downs, ups and downs in life. So yeah. it's um, just like the cure, you know, the music the, the, yeah. the was a similar exactly. trajectory for me. So yeah. I hope people like it. Yeah, I think they will. I, I really want to stress that, that I think anybody that's a cure fan out there would get into this a lot, you know, more than a lot of the previous books even and stuff I think it flows that was, better. That was one of my goals. <laughs> yeah there's not a lot out there yeah there's been ones and you know I've, I've heard varying degrees of stuff that i've referenced and stuff with the podcast but yeah there isn't really like a, a cool thing there so there's really not perfect. that many yeah and so I, I there aren't that many and people I, I've, I've seen it mentioned like so many books about the cure i'm like there really aren't no nah. there really aren't yeah, I mean, like yeah. that Ten of Measuring Years is great because it's from them, but I mean, it's like yeah. cuts off. It like barely kiss me, I think, you know? Yeah. <laughs> it's just like. Yeah. And it's also their sort of myth making. <laughs> yeah, yeah, totally. That's like packed full of like, is this for real? Just like yeah, random, exactly. like them backstage exactly. drunk, yeah. you know, making a joke yeah. or something. But um. But it was a good, it's a classic book, though. Yeah, yeah, definitely. So. Cool, man. Well, and we'll also, uh, you know, we'd well, love thank to... you so much, dude. Yeah, thank you for coming on. I really appreciate it. Like I said, it's a hectic time of year and stuff, but I really wanted to get this in and, and out to yeah. the people before. Sorry about last time. I I was uh, I was totally thwacked out on uh, painkillers. I was in the hospital. I really? I screwed up my hand really badly, um, but it's it's coming along now. Um, yeah, you know, it's feeling a lot better. better. So. Good. Yeah. <laughs> so getting yeah. back to normal. Definitely no worries there. And and yeah, you could have done the show on painkillers and probably made more sense than us half the time so <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> we will we talk about but, the top and japanese whispers the whole yeah, time yeah totally we'll have to <laughs> but yeah anytime if you're if you're willing we'd love to have you back you know as our cure expert for sure and uh yeah absolutely just to... hit me up anytime i'd be happy to do it cool man and uh hopefully you have a great holiday season and keep healing that hand up out there and uh keep i safe. will you too sounds good have a good holiday and uh Thanks so much for, for doing this. I really appreciate it. No problem. Thanks for writing it. Uh, I'll definitely be referring back to it quite often, as I said. <laughs> so. All right, man. Take care. Kiss me goodbye. Okay, again, a very special thanks to Christian for taking the time and talking with us during his hectic time of year. Everything's always a mess at this time of year, so I really can't thank him enough for uh, coming on and sharing uh, his thoughts on this new book and, and the whole process. Uh, you guys out there, thank you for listening, and uh, I really, really think you should just order this book right now if you haven't already. So go check it out. It's... Um, available everywhere it's a great price and you won't be disappointed it's so nice to have all this cure reference in your fingertips in your hands there anytime you need to flip back to a section easy to find so um so yeah go order it right now quit quit slacking around uh that cure fan will thank you even if it's you uh, so we'll catch you soon um if not next week with our end of the year episode definitely in two weeks um looking forward to sh wrapping up 2021 with you Chaz and i will hash out all our favorites um and, and can't wait to hear yours too thank you for a wonderful uh, year here at the Holy Hour podcast. If this is the end before then, uh, I'll thank you now. And I uh, really appreciate all the support and uh, all the open ears and putting up with our bullshit for another year. So thank you. And I'm going to keep it rolling. Lots of cool stuff on the horizon for the cure in 2022. So uh, looking forward to it. We'll catch you soon. Happy holidays out there. Be safe doing whatever you're going to do. And uh, we'll see you on the other side. Talk hard.